I graduated a couple months ago from university and I just got my diploma in the mail. And seeing the diploma like in person really got me thinking about how I got to this point and what I've learned from the five years I spent at San Jose State University. For many people, college is one of the best times of your life. It can be, arguably, one of the greatest periods of self-discovery in anyone's life. I am not the same person who I was before and who I am now after college. And for the most part, I'm better for it, aside from the weight gain. <laughs> if you're starting college, you probably have a lot of worries that you're thinking about, especially with classes most likely being virtual for the foreseeable future. And I was the same way when I started college, and there's a lot of things that I wish I knew when I started. So, in my infinite wisdom, as a 22-year-old college graduate, here are five things I wish that I knew when I started college. Number one, you don't need to get involved in everything. <laughs> I am the type of person who, when I see something that I'm interested in, I will absolutely try it out. I have had a ton of experiences in high school and college because of that, ranging from doing choir, doing breakdance, doing social dance, learning Japanese, training with the judo team, joining bodybuilding club, becoming president of the Japanese Student Society, and more. I don't regret any of these things individually, and in fact, I'm glad I did all of them. But as it was happening, it was honestly way too much, and I don't know how I did it. At my peak of busy, I worked three jobs, I had an above average class load, and I was the president of a club. So my average day would look like wake up at 5.30, get to work to be the front desk at a gym by 5.45, do that until 8, make a mad dash to the train station to take the train to school at 8.15 so I can get to class at 9, have class from like 9 to 2, then have work until the evening, and then sometimes I'd have a night class as well. I would be busy from 5.30 in the morning until 8 or 9 p.m. most days. And then once I got home, I had to do homework. On an average day, I was probably getting like at most six hours of sleep, usually five hours of sleep. <laughs> and quite frankly, I was constantly stressed out by that huge workload that I put myself under, and I was really spreading myself way too thin across these things. I wasn't as good of a club president as I could have been, because I was sacrificing some of my effort that I could have been spending on that on doing other things. And to be clear, I am not saying that you should not do things and get involved. Getting involved, joining clubs, taking a part-time job while you're in college, could be one of the best and most invaluable experiences in your entire life. But the main point is, don't stretch yourself too thin. If the things that you're a part of become something that stresses you out, rather than something you're excited about, then you might be in too many things. Which brings me to number two. Good grades are important, but don't hurt yourself to get them. For the majority of my career in high school and college, I had a 4.0 GPA, and I really deeply ingrained that as part of my identity. I'm really proud of, of having that for so long, but it was so much unneeded pressure that I put on myself. If a project or test was worth a pretty large portion of your grade for a class, I would get really anxious about it, because if I so much as got an A- in a class, that would have killed my 4.0 forever. And eventually, inevitably, I did get an A- in a class, and I did lose my cumulative GPA of 4.0. At first, I was totally devastated by that loss. I thought, no, my perfect grades, they're gone! When in reality, after it set in, I felt a huge rush of relief. I didn't have to be perfect anymore. I could get like a 3.95 and be totally fine. <laughs> as long as I graduated some kind of cum laude with honors, I would still be graduating with a lot of prestige. I am not saying don't try, don't get good grades, but what I am saying is get good grades, 
work hard and do your best, but your best doesn't have to be 100%, 100% of the time. It can be 90%, 80%, or even lower, but as long as you're doing your best, you're doing enough. Your best is the best you can do without hurting yourself. And putting less pressure on myself academically would have helped me a lot with this next one. Number three, say yes to more social things. When I started college, I was against partying and the fun side of college, at least for myself. I was invited to parties and things like that, but I would almost always say no because their alcohol would be involved. Looking back, I realized I could have still gone and made friends and just not drank, but I still said no anyways. It took until my fourth year to start saying yes to these things, and by that point, it started to feel like I had to make up for lost time. I am in no way advocating for underage drinking or becoming a total party animal and all that, but I do think everyone should be more open to a social life than I was in my first few years. College lasts four to six years for most people, but the friends you make will last a lifetime. Next, we have number four. Spend as much time abroad as possible. I did study abroad twice and I had one internship abroad. That totaled to about 11 weeks of that, though I did extend all of those trips to have some solo travel. Those were my best college experiences by far and any amount of studying abroad will teach you more about yourself and the world than any class you can possibly take. My only regret is that I didn't study abroad more. The classes I took were either summer or winter sessions, so they were pretty short, so I never did like a full semester or year abroad. My issue was I didn't think about studying abroad at all until I was already in my third year. And by that point, I already had a set class schedule for the coming semesters so that I could graduate in the semester that I wanted to. So if you are just starting college, think about studying abroad as soon as possible. I recommend doing it in your second or third year because that gives you the most flexibility. Because you'll probably want to be at your actual university for your last year. And that's probably gonna be your fourth year, but knowing how college is taking longer and longer for most people, that might not be the case. Momo, stop hitting my tripod with your tail. And you may think that studying abroad is restrictively expensive, when in reality, a lot of the time, it isn't. If you're going away for college and you're paying for room or board, either getting help or getting a loan, there's a very, very high chance that whatever country you're interested in, the cost of living will be lower. Especially if you live in a state like California or New York or somewhere like that. On top of that, you'll probably be paying the same tuition as your university, especially if they have some sister school program or other exchange initiatives. And on top of that, if your country of choice is not an English speaking country, there's like a 95% chance or higher that they do have an English medium program in that it's classes that are entirely taught in English. I recommend doing a semester or year abroad in your second or third year of university at a country that you're really interested in, you want to learn the language for, and you've done enough research to know that you'll have a good time and won't spend an arm and a leg to get there. You'll make friends around the world, have amazing experiences, and even save money if you're smart about it. The last and arguably most important thing I wish I knew when I started college was to get more sleep. <laughs> this ties in to almost everything I mentioned before. Like if you're doing too many things, you won't get enough sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, you won't have the energy to hang out with friends and do all those other things. So sleep is like the one thing that ties your entire life together for this. I subsisted on unhealthy, sugary, caffeinated beverages for a lot of my time in college. I would even do Starbucks runs for my entire group of friends just because the Starbucks was convenient and on the way to class for me. Don't get me wrong, I do love myself a venti ice matcha latte with eight scoops of matcha and light ice, but that's not a healthy thing to have consistently. I only drank beverages like that because I was getting insufficient sleep, like five or six hours. I was burning the candle on both ends. 
if you don't get enough rest, eventually it's gonna fall apart. I was very lucky in that I was only close to falling apart. I realized how close I was when quarantine began. I was laid off from my early morning job and my other responsibilities drastically decreased because in-person stuff wasn't happening. So I started getting eight hours of sleep every night and I felt so much better. <laughs> the point is, get enough sleep. There may be weeks or days or other periods where you don't get enough sleep for a temporary amount of time, and that's okay. If you have a big project or a big event or you're going to like a big hangout with your friends, it can be worth it as long as it's not too much. But if you have so much on your plate that sleep is an afterthought and you're sacrificing it, you may need to lighten up. In conclusion, a lot of this advice might seem like it's conflicting with itself. I'm saying don't do too many things, but also do as many things as you can. And that's the whole point. <laughs> it's all about balance. Everyone is different. Everyone has different limits to what they can and can't do. And the whole point is to know those. Do as much as you can, make the most of your time, but not at the expense of your physical and mental well-being. This upcoming semester, maybe this whole upcoming school year is gonna be a weird time. Some of this advice honestly just won't apply, like the studying abroad stuff, because you just won't be able to. But eventually it will. And some of this advice, no matter what situation you're in, will apply. That being get enough sleep, don't do too much, know your limits. If you're currently in college or just about to start, all I have to say is good luck, enjoy yourself, and do your best. And remember, your best does not have to be 100% all the time. See you next time.